Hey everyone, it's John here from Hot Take Hockey, back with another video. Let's talk about the Nashville Predators and big conversations right now. Barry Trotz opening up some cap space with the recent Ryan Johansson trade. Alex DeBrinkit has Nashville high on his list. I have just the big hot take out there. What if DeBrinkit and Soros could swap places? The Ottawa Senators are in need of a goalie. I think this could also be a smaller trade and I'll look at that option as well. But... I do think DeBrincat can be a realistic target for the Preds now with this more like with more cap space. Uh, I've talked about DeBrincat or Konechny. I've talked specifically about Konechny being a target for Barry Trotz, a guy that he would like. So I think both those guys could be targets for the Preds. But looking at this trade specifically, and I've got a few other trades that I think the Preds will look into: Brandstrom, DeBrincat, and Marilainen for Fabro and Saros. And I just I look at this and I go, okay, there's some. There's some fits here, and I think Fabro on the Sens, bottom pair, more isolated, uh, potentially with a guy like Clevin. I'll talk about that in a separate video, what the Sens could look like. But Brandstrom, Debrinkit, Marilyn, I think all pieces the Preds would like bringing in. Debrinkit, young enough to be part of this team going forward for the long haul. And Brandstrom, 22-23, Marilyn, still very young, I think like 19-20. So it, it's just, it fits the Preds mold here. And I do look at... Uh, the fit that Saros could have in Ottawa. I have these other deals out here. So Tyson Berry, I have a few teams that I think could target Tyson Berry. Uh, one being Florida, uh, one being Buffalo, one actually being Ottawa potentially, and the New York Islanders. I think there's some rumors out there that the National Predators could actually take on Josh Bailey in a dump. And I have another dump here as an example in Anthony Manta. But I think the scenario is... That if the Preds were to take on a Josh Bailey, maybe they get a couple seconds or a second and a third, and then the Islanders get Tyson Berry in that process. So it's not like the Preds are uh, getting extra cap. It's basically cap in, cap out. But because Tyson Berry is more of a valuable asset, they do get draft compensation. But I got some other hot take deals. Them getting rid of the Matt Duchesne contract, three more years at $8 million, and bringing Kuznetsov in. Barry Trotz has the familiarity with Kuznetsov and Mantha. They bring those guys in. And then actually I have this hot take trade. To be honest, I would say ignore that trade and just look at these three trades as like actually realistic. I think Duclair for Barry is definitely realistic. I think it fits needs on both sides. Duclair could play a great year in Nashville and be a flip at the deadline potentially, depending on where Nashville's at. I think the Debrinkit trade, maybe not Debrinkit for Saros, but I'll bring up another example here uh, from this Sense fan. I could see like Debrinkit for like Tomasino in a first. I could see that happening. Nashville trading like their uh, Edmonton first round pick they got in the Ekholm trade. I could see them flipping that with a younger player. Maybe not Tomasino, maybe a different younger player. Um, so a younger player, first round pick, maybe another piece for Debrinkit. I think they like Tomasino a lot, so maybe it's not that piece, but uh, that first round pick from Ed Edmonton could make some sense to flip for Debrinkit. And then some other assets. But just going back to this Preds scenario here. The Cody Glass one. I mean, I think the Preds want to keep Cody Glass. It depends what he wants as an RFA this offseason. But I would say, realistically, Cody Glass stays in Nashville. But he is from Winnipeg. So if there's one guy that Winnipeg could target and in going into the, the change of scenery where they're moving on from Shifley, moving on from Dubois, I also could see Dubois being um, a target for the Preds. But moving on into the conversation here. The National Predators have a roster of 23 here, as you can see. And if I shift this over, they still have over $8 million of cap space. And this is a pretty good roster if we look at it here. So in this hot take scenario I have, they get Forsberg, Kuznetsov, Duclair. They have Debrinkin and Shifley in here. And I mean, they just have like four solid lines here. I mean, I love that young third line of Tomasino, Novak, and Evangelista. I love that. Uh, their defense core is not that bad. I think at some point, maybe they'll ask McDonough to flip him for assets, especially if they can retain on it. So, because, hey, clear as day, Barry Trotz is not afraid to retain on salary. And I think Branstrom's development is going to improve big time. And you give a scare off the opportunity to be the number one goalie with Kevin Lankin as the backup. I like this a lot. If you're the Preds going to next year with this cap space, and you could flip guys like Duclair, Shifley, maybe you want to keep Shifley long term, but I'm just saying, like, the opportunity to flip some of these guys for big time. Uh, packages, Kuznetsov, Duclair, and Shifley. And I really think if there's one guy that can get with Kuznetsov here and, and figure it out and get him in a good situation, it's Barry Trotz. I mean, look at Kuznetsov's run when the Caps won the Cup. Barry Trotz is the head coach. So I do think this could be a likely scenario, specifically with Zabrinka going to Nashville. But I could see Kuznetsov as a target for Nashville this offseason. And in that scenario, as I said, 
the cap of Mantha gets flipped. Winnipeg gets a couple draft picks and Cody Glass. Shifley comes in. Again, I would say, realistically, and we'll just do it right here, I could see this being a likely scenario of canceling this trade and Nashville just riding out one year of Mantha because that's no big deal for them. Maybe even retaining 50% and flipping them at the deadline, but like something like this. Like, I totally could see this as a scenario. And to me, there's not much of a difference, right? Like, that's still a pretty good top nine. <laughs> and very young with those four guys, uh, including um, Evangelista, who I'm very high on. So, give me your thoughts, guys. Uh, I do want to include in this video just quickly um, what the Colorado Avalanche could look like uh, with their new additions. And uh, yeah, Ryan Johansson, I think Jonathan Duran, he is a free agent right now, but I've been, I just wanted to include that at the end of this video, just in case people haven't heard it from me yet. If you're a new uh, subscriber, new viewer, I've been manifesting Duran to Colorado for like three, four years now. I think it's going to happen this off season, or at least I hope, because the storyline with him with McKinnon would be too much fun. So going back to the Preds here, I could see Debrinket going to Nashville. Alex Debrinket, give me your thoughts where you think he could end up. Hit that subscribe button, like, notification bell. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.